you know, as an American and being raised in the church, in a Christian church, um, I've heard this so many times. John 3, 16, God is love. Um, um, yeah, that he, you know, loved the world, that um, he gave his own life, and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, um, I used to memorize those verses because I had to. Um, but it doesn't matter that God is love. There, God is not even here to help us. Um, I have so many friends in other countries that are literally beside themselves with worry and fear and devastation because of this COVID virus. They've lost their jobs, their homes, even their pets. They've lost their possessions and sometimes their boyfriend or girlfriend or their family has been split up and um i mean americans are suffering it doesn't matter how how wealthy you are you are definitely suffering during covid um you're there's so many restrictions um there's a lot of invasiveness um you're required to uh, take covid tests or um, prove you don't have COVID or sanitize your hands or wear gloves or wear a mask. And um, um, for me, like I really, really hate, I hate the feeling of a mask when it's very hot outside. And I'm, to me, it's it's suffocating and it, it's giving me headaches. Like um, just breathing my own like air and just have the pressure on my nose and just wearing it in the heat and um, where there's not a lot of air conditioning or in cold weather, the mask is really, really getting to me. And um, I just really, really hope that we don't have to, you know, this still doesn't go on, um, you know, in the summer because summers kill me and I really, really hate the humidity. And then with breathing the air into your mask, over into your face, and, you know, the mask gets wet, and the, your makeup gets on the mask if you're a woman, and you can't even wear lipstick, so just forgetting, forget about, you know, trying to look good, or uh, if you wear lipstick, it's going to smear. Your mask is going to just smear like crazy. So um, everybody's suffering during COVID. So it does not matter one bit that God is love because that does not affect this world. That does not affect your world, my world, anybody's world. And so, I, you know, I'm just tired of uh, these rote um, sayings and quotes and verses, Bible verses. and. You know, I, I was taught to memorize these things as a child, but life and experiences and traumas just prove that there is no love. And uh, if you do have love or forgiveness or acceptance, it's pretty rare, really. And unconditional love is very, very hard to find. And, um, you know, not even your parents can give you um, unconditional love. <laughs> Uh, I know my parents were very conditional and um, that that to me was really disgusting I realized when I was young that their love was only conditional if I believed the way they believed if I in, endorsed um, the political affiliation that they um, you know were dedicated to then I was their friend and their daughter but any time that I swayed against their opinions or their doctrine or their religion or um, you know political persuasions then I was I was clearly um, well I guess they withheld from me they withheld affection or they showed their disapproval now I didn't get beat for it nothing like that um, but it's just the fact that uh, parents can withhold love attention money um, help um, and uh, empathy from you um, if they don't if you don't agree with them and if you don't um, embrace what they embrace <laughs> um, so life is really really unfair and um, I don't even know many Americans who are, you know, truly happy and just really, really, um, I mean, I think America is very complicated because there is a lot of access, but that's also a trapping.
the fact that there are um, you know there's so many things to buy and so many luxury items um, that's just a trap because there's always more and more and more and um, you know you, you can always want something that you can't have I mean you might get a boat and then you want a yacht and then you want a bigger yacht or then you want two yachts and then you want a whole fleet of yachts so it never ends whenever there is um, you know um, a lot of capitalism or um, you know a lot of availability of luxury items um, there's there's just no end to you know the amount of struggles that you're gonna have with thinking that you don't um, you know are keeping up with the Joneses or um, you know you feel devalued because you're not wearing designer clothes designer shoes or you know you don't have the latest car so um, it's very very difficult to, to to live in a country like America and it's very expensive to live um, there's so many insurance needs security needs and um, you know that the more you have <laughs> Um, whether it's a nice purse, a nice car, you're going to have to protect those items either with um, some kind of security device or locks or, um, uh, you know, even a bodyguard. I don't know. So there's no place on this world that I would rather be born um, or I would be happier being born in another place. It doesn't exist. Um, uh, you know, contentment contentment with this world is is very difficult to find and there's always going to be disease there's always going to be pandemics I think we're in for some real surprises I think uh, climate change is going to be hitting us really really hard by now and um, it's gonna hurt the future generations even more so but um whether you were in Aruba or whether you were in America or whether you were in Portugal or England or Africa, um, your life is not going to be good. And that's just the, the complete design of life. Um, there are financial needs, biological needs, and there's always deprivation. There's, there's always going to be deprivation and pain. Pain, hunger, deprivation, sleep deprivation. I have a friend now in America. She hasn't slept. She said she hasn't gotten a wink of sleep in 48 hours. And she said she is just raging. She's, and I don't know, she has like, you know, some other complicated situations. Yeah, there's always an ambulance. There's always somebody that, you know, is in need. <laughs> somebody who's struggling. But, um, yeah, my, my friend can't sleep. And that's her biggest problem. So I don't know what kind of biological problems she has, but you know, she's older now and, and old people have a, a lot of problems sleeping. And I found that out myself because when I turned about 55, I had dif more difficulty sleeping. I mean, I could sleep for 12 hours straight before I was 55 and not anymore. It's like kind of like choppy sleep. And uh, yeah, so things greatly change um, all throughout your life and anybody in 1.1 miles at the roundabout take the first exit onto Bernhard Street. anybody who says that they're happy or they're content I mean you know they uh, you know look at that guy I don't know if you saw that he was like riding his motorcycle down the middle of the median I don't think it sh I showed that but I, I was filming it but I don't think I have my <laughs> my camera lens on the right place <laughs> but uh no, what, what was I saying? Um, yeah, there, there's just no, never going to be contentment and, and not for very long. I mean, y you know, you may be happy-go-lucky and you may be, um, you know, riding on a high note, but all could come crashing with a head-on collision, um, with a bombing, with a terrorist attack, with a attack with a hurricane, um, um, you know, any act of violence. Or, you know, a sudden medical issue. I had an, a, an, a relative, and he was about 82, and he was extremely tired, and he went to the doctor. Would you believe he had leukemia? And the doctor told him to get his affairs in order. And he was about, well, within about a week, he was comatose. 
I remember sending him a telegram. He was he was dead by 10 days. Yeah, you know, I mean, he was older. You know, sure enough, I mean, he was really old, but um, um, never the, nevertheless, nobody expects to die from like a cancer in like 10 days. I didn't even know such a thing could happen. But um, I don't know, there's just so many fears in life. Um, so, anyway, God, God is love. It doesn't matter whether God is love. There, there's no reason to be born. There's pretty cactus, aren't there? Yeah, so, anyway, off to the beach. It looks like it's kind of drizzling. So, I'm trying to get to the beach, and, um, it's kind of frustrating because, um, they, um, <laughs> they... The internet doesn't always work here. At the roundabout, take the first exit so, onto Bernhard Street. That's about all. There's roundabouts everywhere. It's very complicated. <laughs> try having no internet and, um, you know, trying to understand this driving system. In 1.6 miles, take a slight right turn onto Dr. Sheepman Street. <laughs> yeah, it's Dutch. <laughs> So anyway, um, another thing about this this country or this island is that there are no streets. Oh, look at that goat. Just out there in the middle of nowhere. I've seen dogs and cats and chickens and roosters. But anyway, um, thanks for, mom, thanks for listening to this video. God is love. See ya. Bye-bye.